Hello and welcome to our second preview show of the week here at Vitality Stadium. It's been quite the few days and both myself and Neil Parrott will be going through it all over the next 20 minutes. Let's take a look at what's coming up. We'll be looking back at that incredible 4-0 win over Chelsea here at Vitality Stadium. We'll also be looking ahead to tonight's Under-18s FA Youth Cup game against Aston Villa. And finally we'll be looking ahead to tomorrow's game against Cardiff in South Wales. But there's just one place to start and that is with the 4-0 win over Chelsea here at Vitality Stadium. It was quite a night, so let's take a look at the short highlights. Chelsea get themselves organised. Louise, uh, rather, King back to Fraser. Down the left-hand side, well advanced. The Cherries attack the north stand. Lovely little ball into Brooks. Pulls it back for Joshua King! And the Cherries have broken through! 90 seconds into the second half! And Bournemouth are at it against Chelsea yet again! to Louise for Chelsea in the centre circle and he's nicked it straight to David Brooks and Brooks has got a chance to play King in here oh it wasn't a great touch from Brooks they wait for a bang that doesn't come and David Brooks is onside a chance to put the cherries too clear Brooks it is 2-0 Chelsea can play Brooks celebrates he made the first he scored the second and the cherries a year on famous win at Stamford Bridge could be on course for another memorable night against Chelsea it's 2-0 Klein now looking to release Stanislas, and Stanislas has snuck in, Stanislas to King, it is all over surely, it is Joshua King with a third, the Cherries chop down Chelsea again, 3-0 last year, now 3-0 this year, 15 minutes left, surely no coming back from this. Unbelievable ball from Klein, absolutely inch perfect, I thought he was going to shoot underneath the keeper, but he just slotted it for his teammate to slot it home. What a fantastic finish. Chelsea wait the corner short, in it comes, up go the heads, Rudiger, another good save from Boric, and then cleared away, Ake, and then hacked clear inside the six-yard box, Boric and Ake between them did brilliantly.
Chris Mecklen jogs on, passes on to instructions to Nathan Ake. He's Tottenham have equalised late on against Watt with Busson. In comes the call. The header is there! It is four! Charlie Daniels with the crowning glory to a famous night at the Vitality Stadium. Chelsea have been pumped. This crowd are pumped. It is 4-0. And what a Wednesday night we've witnessed. Extended highlights of that one are available for free on AFCV TV. And if you haven't watched them already, then I strongly recommend that you do. Neil, it was quite a night, wasn't it? Where do we even start? Well, it was one of the most famous nights in the club's history, no doubt. 4-0 um, win against six times top flight champions Chelsea. You've got to be happy with a, a night's work. First half, uh, Chelsea saw a lot of the ball, didn't create too many chances, but Bournemouth defended superbly, restricted them and then stunned them by taking the lead just seconds after the restart and from there on in it was really one-way traffic and you wouldn't say that too often when you play Chelsea. And in the last preview show both myself and, and Chris Temple were saying that that 3-0 win last year was going to take some topping but the one on Wednesday came pretty close didn't it? I think it's, um, I think it's probably joined a, a band of five or six games since the club's been in the Premier League. You would put them all possibly equal. Varying significance of importance obviously the first season they went to Stamford Bridge and it was a bit of a smash and grab 1-0 win, Glenn Murray's goal. Uh, but they went there on the back of a nine-game nine run where they hadn't won, so that was a vitally important game. Last season, a year ago, won 3-0 there. That was an emphatic 3-0 and thoroughly deserved win. And then last night, well, nobody would have called that scoreline at half-time. Um, Chelsea had dominated possession in the first half, albeit without creating too many chances. And as soon as Joshua King opened the scoring after 47 minutes, there was, uh, it was one-way traffic really in the second half. And you don't say that too often when you play Chelsea. And they had to be really patient, didn't they? Because in the first half, Chelsea were throwing everything, everything at, uh, at Bournemouth's defence. Well, like I said, if you look at the possession stats, Chelsea's, Chelsea had so much more of the ball, the passes, uh, passing accuracy and everything. But a vital save from Arta Boric in the early stages, pushing um, um, Matthias Kovac's shot onto the header onto the bar. Uh, but after that, they didn't really create too many chances despite all their possession. And that second half, Bournemouth, they came out absolutely firing, didn't they? As you said, the 47th minute and, and Joshua King had put the ball in the back of the net. I think you've got to say it's one of the best second half performances, certainly in the Premier League era. Like I said, it was one way traffic after Josh had scored that first goal and th they, just couldn't, they just couldn't handle David Brooks. Um, Chelsea, you could say they almost fell apart really because we were rampant and a f one of the most fantastic passes I've ever seen from Nathaniel Klein to set up Junior Stanislas for Josh's second goal and capped off with Charlie Daniel scoring a header not been an easy time for Charlie obviously got some, um, his father's not been very well which we, which we know about so it was great to see him get on the score sheet as well And it was a really special moment that wasn't it for Charlie Daniels he went straight over to Eddie Howe afterwards as well and gave him a big hug on the touchline A very special moment indeed and you could see you could see what it meant to Charlie you could see what it meant to the manager as well um, and that's just part of this squad it's just they're so tightly, tightly knit squad um, some of them have been here a long, long time. Um, like we said, obviously Charlie's father hasn't been very well. We know about that. So what an emotional time it was for him. And for Joshua King, he scored against West Ham. He's got another two goals yesterday. So his confidence is going to be sky high at the moment, isn't it? Fantastic to see Joshua King scoring two goals last night. It's two fantastically well taken goals as well. Um, he, he was up front um, for a period of time on his own in the first half when you know, probably standing there watching the game playing out in front of him, but he stuck there, stuck in there, and when his first chance came along, he took it emphatically, and his second goal, and also had a hand in the, the goal for David Brooks as well, so it was a fantastic all-round performance from him. Well, you mentioned David Brooks there, he was an absolute handful all night, wasn't he, for Chelsea? I think if you look at the, uh, the price tags of everybody on the pitch, David Brooks is a long, long way down compared with some of those Chelsea players, but 
you've got to say that yesterday he was head and shoulders above some really, really big name players out there. So his stock's rising with every game. Um, what a prospect he looks. And of course, a clean sheet as well. Eddie Howe would have been just as happy with that as well as the four goals, wouldn't he? I think he'd be delighted because it's back to back clean sheets as well. So it's only the third time that's happened in the Premier League for Bournemouth this season. And with people like Josh King and David Brooks and Callum Wilson in your team, you're always looking like you're going to score. So if you're going to keep a clean sheet at one end, then you're going to win more than you lose. And of course, Artur Boric again, you mentioned earlier, he made a big save in the first half. And again, another clean sheet for him. He's, he's doing really well, isn't he? Yes, he's come in um, for the last couple of games. He's looked very, very solid. Uh, kind of been easy for him. You know, he hasn't played any competitive um, Premier League games for, what was it, about 18 months Came in, looked very solid against West Ham, very solid again last night, handling, distribution, and as I said, that first save in the early stages set the platform for what was a fantastic all-round team performance. And under the lights as well, the fans, they, they were in full voice, weren't they? Well, if you can't celebrate beating Chelsea 4-0 on a, on a Wednesday night, then you, know, you shouldn't be coming to watch because it was just one of those nights. Like I said, there have been some famous, memorable nights for Bournemouth supporters, and that goes right up there with them. Talk about some famous, memorable nights. Where does that one rank in, in the Premier League history since Bournemouth have been promoted? I think it probably ranks in the top five. We've spoken about the two wins at Stamford Bridge. Of course, you've got to remember the, f the very first Premier League win away at West Ham, which will be a memorable day for everybody, a 4-3 win with Callum getting a hat-trick there. And then the Liverpool game here, 4-3, an epic finale. So probably in the, in the, in the top five. Well, it was, certainly was an excellent night. And next up here at Vitality Stadium, it's the under-18s in the FA Youth Cup against Aston Villa. We've been down to training to see how they've been getting on, so let's take a look now. Back tomorrow night, that feeling, the feeling we're going to have now going into tomorrow when we go back for lunch and we turn up for the walk tomorrow and we go into the evening, that feeling of positivity and the real togetherness in the group. We need to have that personality and bravery to play. And that's the mentality we need for tomorrow night. <laughs> Just over 24 hours before the game tomorrow night, it's fifth round of the cup. How's the mood in the camp at the moment? How's training gone this week? Yeah, it's been good. Um, like I said, the preparation is different for these games because you know we, we ultimately want to deliver a performance and try and win and progress to the next round. Um, so with the Youth Cup, it's more probably intense, more detailed. Um, and the boys are in good spirits, been pleased with training. Uh, so I think we're ready to deliver a performance. <laughs> We've, got, we've done quite a bit of analysis on them and looking at how they play in the formation and stuff, but at the end of the day I think we well, can only do so much. It's all about us doing our game and then them adapting to us. We don't want to adapt to them too much because then it will ruin how we play. We want to just take the game to them. We want to do as best we can and it would be nice to make history as an age group and show something for what we've been, how hard we've worked this season. Vitality Stadium, Aston Villa, should be a big crowd tomorrow. Um, how big a part do you think nerves might play? And uh, how are you going to keep them relaxed up to the uh, seven o'clock kickoff? Yeah, we're going to um, we're going to have a little beach walk uh, just in late morning, just to stretch the legs and um, get the boys together. Uh, nerves, are, you know, are always a, you know an issue. I say with like you know experienced players, let alone players that are 17, 18 years of age. Um, so, but I think the experience we've had in the previous rounds this season, the fact we played against some cat ones quite a lot. Uh, I think that will stand us in good stead for, for the quality that, and that, that Aston Villa are. Um, so I think I think we'll be fine nerves-wise. Um, you know, Aston Villa are big favourites. Got a great catchment area. Cat One Academy established. Um, so be, I just want our boys to go out and enjoy the occasion, enjoy playing in front of a crowd, and delivering a, an AFC Bournemouth performance. And understanding the last game against Mansfield, or the last home game at least, Eddie Howe came into the dressing room at, like, at half time. What did he say? Um, he just basically said that we need to pass the ball forwards and that he just gave us like a good feeling that a buzz, he kind of gave us like an urge to keep going and showing us that we can win the game. Body central! Yeah. Good body, well done. Can you come, Cam? I know you were at the first team game last night, magnificent win against Chelsea. Uh, are you able to draw on some of the, the high that's going around the club and the momentum perhaps going into tomorrow? Yeah, we spoke about it this morning. All, every single one of our players was there. We, um, so I just said if they needed any more motivation, um, then it was there last night. Everything they want to be, and, you know, games they want to be involved in was like last night. And obviously, you know, for us, it's our game tomorrow. So it's been a great week for the club. Um, you know, if we can add to that on Friday, that would be great. And 
you know, it just adds that feel good factor that's currently around around the place. Come on, you. Wait. Three, two. Well, that was the under 18s down at training. They are in FA Youth Cup action tonight here at Vitality Stadium, and tickets are available on the gate. Neil, it's going to be quite an occasion, isn't it? Because this is the furthest, that, or the joint furthest, I should say, that the under 18s have ever got in this competition. It's the second time in, in the club's history they've got this far. Whether they can eclipse the class of 69 and reach the semi finals, only time will tell. They've certainly done very well to get this far. They beat Mansfield in the third round here, and then a fortnight ago, they went to Oxford and comprehensively won 3 0 with a fantastic hat trick from Jake Scrimshaw. They're going to have their work cut out tonight Aston Villa, Category 1, Bournemouth, a Category 3. So they're, they're obviously two ranks higher in the categories. But they'll be approaching the game full of confidence. They've had a fantastic season in the league. They came second to Oxford in the Youth Alliance. And, you know, they beat them in the uh, Youth Cup the other day. Now they're going to they're start in their Merit League as well. So they'll, they'll go into the game full of confidence. And it's a challenge they'll really relish, isn't it? Because Aston Villa are category one side, as you say. It's something that, an opportunity that doesn't necessarily always come around. Well, plus the fact they're going to be playing under the lights at the Vitality Stadium. It's not every day of your life as an under-18. You get the chance to play on a Premier League ground. So it's going to be a fantastic night. They'll all have family, friends. Everybody will be watching them. Hopefully we'll get a really, really good crowd. So hopefully they'll rise to the occasion. And you talked about plenty of goals. Jake Scrimshaw, he got a hat-trick in the last round and he's going to be firing all cylinders tomorrow night, isn't he? He's certainly a player that I'm really looking forward to watching again. We went to Oxford, like I said, and certainly one of the best hat-tricks I've ever seen for, for someone so young. Took, took his goal so well. Looks a real talent. But there's a lot of very talented players in that team as well. It's certainly not a one-man team by any means. Uh, he needed, needed the supply, needed the goalkeeper to stay strong in the early stages when they came under a bit of pressure. So it was a real, it was a real team effort to beat Oxford that night. As you say, a real team effort. Christian Sadie got two assists. It was also a really good game for Nathan Mariah Welsh as well. So as you say, there's, there's young talent scattered all across the team. And, and they can all showcase their talents tonight on the biggest stage um, in, in what could potentially be the biggest game of some of them, well, certainly the biggest game of their careers so far. Some of them will obviously go on to achieve great things in the game. Others, others may not. So, you know, they really need to grab the ball by the horns and make the most of it tonight against Aston Villa. And Alan Con Connell, he's worked really hard with that side. And as you say, they've had a fantastic season in the league and they deserve to be in this, in this round of the competition. Alan's certainly making his mark in, uh, in, in management with the under-18s. It's, uh, it's obviously a long, long ladder. And he's, you know, he'll say that he's on the bottom rung there, but he certainly made, made a, a great start to management. Um, and it looks like he's got that team playing how he wants, how the first team manager wants his youth teams and under-21 wants to play. Goes all through the club. The ethos, the philosophy of what the manager wants is being produced by these managers at all the age group levels. And you can see the rewards are coming on the pitch because the under-21s are performing really well this season. They're already in one cup final. They could be in another cup final as well because they play showing in the quarterfinal of the Hampshire Senior Cup on Tuesday. And with no home game for the first team this weekend, it's a really good opportunity for the fans to come out and see some of the young talent, isn't it? Well, anybody who doesn't get the opportunity to travel to, to Cardiff, what a fantastic night. Hopefully the snow will stay off and uh, there'll be a big crowd here because the boys certainly deserve it because they've done very, very well to get this far. Absolutely. Well, tickets for that one are available on tickets.afcb.co.uk or you can get them on the gate here tonight. It's a seven o'clock kickoff here at Vitality Stadium. But next up for the first team is that trip to the Cardiff City Stadium to face Cardiff in the Premier League. Let's take a look at what happened last time out as we played them on the opening day of the season.
goals from Ryan Fraser and Callum Wilson saw the Cherries get off to a flying start in the Premier League back in August. Neil, Cardiff at 18th in the league. There's no easy games, is there, in, in this, this league? Well, looking at, looking at Cardiff's stats, yes, they're 18th in the league, but their home record is certainly not one of the worst in the league. Um, just at the, end of, at the end of last year, they won three home Premier League games on the trot, so they're pretty formidable at home. When you get that big crowd behind them at that ground... Uh, they're going to be a tough nut, nut to crack. And of course, they'll be out without Harry Arter, who's been such a key part of that team for the first half of the season. He made 20 appearances for them in the Premier League this season, and he made his mark very early. He's already become a very firm favourite with the supporters there. I was speaking to a local reporter during the week and said what, a, what, a, what an impact he's made in such a short, short space of time. You don't need to tell Bournemouth supporters about how passionate he is, how he wears his heart on his sleeve and how he plays the game. He's obviously gone to Wales and done exactly that there and it's no surprise that he's become a firm favourite so quickly. And after such a great win on Wednesday, it's so important to back it up now against Cardiff tomorrow, isn't it? So important to back it up. I think if people had looked at Chelsea at home, Cardiff away and Liverpool away, they may have thought, well, if we can get three points from those three games, we're doing well. well we've got them already. So um, let's see if we can just pick up three more, maybe six more, who knows. And won 33 points already, so taking that tally up to 36, just keeping those points ticking over would be really, really great for the squad, wouldn't it? I think somebody once said to me, when you're in the Premier League, you've got 38 games. If you can get one point in every game and get 38 points, you should be OK. So we're well ahead of that, but we want to keep going because we want to try and eclipse the ninth place finish from two seasons ago, which was the best in the club's history. And of course, it's been a, a really tough couple of weeks for Cardiff. How much will that be on their mind going into the game? I, I think, without doubt, it's going to be on everybody's mind going into the game. Um, some fortunate circumstances about what happened. Uh, we saw what happened at Arsenal um, on Wednesday night when Cardiff played there. There was a very moving tribute to uh, the player and the pilot of the plane of what happened. So when the players step onto the pitch and they go over that white line, they're involved in a football match for 90 minutes. They've just got to try and do the best they can on the pitch and try and win the game. And of course, for the Cherries, they're without Callum Wilson. Eddie Howe revealed in his post-match press conference on Wednesday that he'd undergone an op operation and it's going to be a, a big loss for the Cherries, isn't it? It's, it's always going to be a big loss when you lose your, your leading goal scorer. He's had a clean-up operation in that knee, but that will be, for the long term, that's, that's going to benefit him, obviously. To take him out of the firing line now for two or three weeks, to get himself 100% fit, he doesn't even look like he's been carrying an injury in the last few weeks the way he's been playing. But look what happened when we played Chelsea. Joshua King stepped into that number nine role, scored two goals, and we've pulled off one of the greatest wins in the club's history. So, listen, give Callum some time to recuperate, get back, and then run in, for, back for the run-in, and then see where we can finish. And, of course, that performance on Wednesday, it's going to be very hard to change, change that squad should they all be fit. Well, of course. I mean, that's obviously the manager's decision to see what his horses for courses. They're playing a completely different team in Cardiff. We'll be playing a di completely different way to, to the way Chelsea played. But the manager certainly got everything right on, on Wednesday night when they played Chelsea. Um, stopped them playing in the first... Well, tried to stop them playing as much as they could, but contained them and defended so well. Might be slightly different when you go to Cardiff. Might be a bit more on the front foot. We'll have to wait and see. But horses for courses, like I said, and different people may be called in. Who knows? That's, that's up to the manager to decide. Absolutely. Well, we thoroughly look forward to our trip to the Cardiff City Stadium tomorrow. If you are going, we hope you have a very safe journey. But if not, make sure you keep an eye across all of our social media channels for the latest updates. Thanks for joining us.